Want to become a master of time? Then you need to understand shutter speed. Hey everybody and welcome to Professional Photography Tips. I'm Josh Cripps. Today we're going to take an in-depth look at shutter speed and what it does. When most people think about a photo, they imagine some instantaneous split-second thing happening. I press a button and click. That moment is frozen in time. But what actually happens when you press the button is that a shutter opens, light streams in, and sometime later, the shutter closes. Now, that process is the same whether you're taking pictures of a hummingbird or of grass growing, but what's different is the amount of time the shutters open. So what is shutter speed used for? Well, you can imagine that during the time your shutter is open, things might be moving around in front of your camera. Okay, if you're taking a picture of something completely static, that might not be the case, but this is a dynamic world we live in, and there's almost always something wiggling around in front of us, whether it's trees blowing in the wind, or animals, people, water, or clouds. This is a world filled with movement, and that movement shows up as motion blur in your photos. And the faster things are moving during the time that the shutter's open, or the longer that the shutter's open, the more you're gonna see that motion blur show up in your photos. Let's do a quick experiment to see what I mean. Grab your camera and make sure it's set to its lowest ISO. Change it to shutter priority mode, usually marked as an S or a TV, and go outside on a nice bright day like this. Now turn the shutter speed dial until your readout says 1000. Now bear in mind that most cameras display shutter speed as fractions of a second, so this 1000 actually means 1 1000th of a second. It's not until you get close to around one second or longer that the camera uses quotation marks to mean the actual duration of the shot. Now spin in a circle and take a few snaps. Notice how the images are fairly sharp even though you were moving. This is because the shutter was open such a short time that the photo couldn't change much during the course of the shot. Now change the shutter speed to 1 40th of a second and do the same thing. All of a sudden, our photos are streaked with motion blur. That's because a significantly longer shutter speed gives a lot more time for our photos to blur out. And the longer your shutter speed is, the more motion you'll see. So in a nutshell, shutter speed is used to control how much motion shows up in your photos. But what not a lot of people realize is that shutter speed is also used to add e-motion to a photo. Generally speaking, the less motion there is, the more tension and drama a photo has. Imagine a huge wave pounding off of some rocks. When you use a short shutter speed to freeze all those little droplets of water in the air, you capture the tension, power, and drama of that moment. Conversely, the more motion you have in an image, the softer, more peaceful, and more serene it tends to become. Consider another crashing wave, this time shot with a long shutter speed. It becomes a cottony puffball, almost dreamy in its softness. Cool, so now you, the artist, has an amazing tool at your disposal. Want your viewers to feel tension and drama? Then use a lightning fast shutter speed to freeze that action. Or you want to create a dreamy, serene feeling? Then slow that shutter speed down. So your next step is to experiment. Go out and shoot a bunch of moving objects. Make sure you use a tripod, otherwise you'll add your own handshake blur to the images. But try trees blowing in the wind, your pets, your kids, streams, or everybody's favorite, waterfalls. Stay in that shutter priority mode and tweak your shutter speed to see what kind of effects you can get. And note that to get those really long shutter speeds, you're gonna to have to shoot in low light conditions, otherwise you'll overexpose your image. You may notice that as you change your shutter speed, your camera is automatically adjusting your aperture to maintain the correct exposure. Check out this video to see why that is. You might also notice that as your aperture changes, some things go in and out of focus in your photos. And exactly why that happens is the subject of our next video, so be sure to subscribe. You can also check out my website, joshuacrips.com, for landscape photography, workshops, and tutorials. Until next time, guys, have fun and happy shooting.